There are lots of reports about Israel on the news. Very bad days are behind us and very bad days lie ahead of us. And watching the news give a false sense of control, as if you are able to better prepare for what's going to happen. But the best way to take control is to disconnect. When I was a child and there was a scary movie on TV, I would just look at the frame around that TV and tell myself that what I was watching wasn't real. And today, as an old man who will be turning 50 in nine years, I go outside to the desert. Between the news, the things that are happening right now, and a sense of eternity that I cannot really grasp, the desert rocks, these layers that are 50 million years old, make for a good place in the middle, or at least a nice quiet place to try and sum up the current situation. I'm fortunate in that my private situation is much better than that of most Israelis. First, we are not located in the firing zone. Second, there haven't been any alarms here. Third, I haven't been called up to serve, and I will tell you why shortly. And fourth, and this is an important one, we live in a kibbutz, so in a community. In our neighborhood, we all have small children. So it doesn't really matter how you feel. You need to wake up in the morning and make breakfast. Having our children at the center of our lives is the best possible way to manage our mental health. As you probably know, the worst thing is to be alone with your own thoughts. So let's go back to last week, Saturday, October 7th, 2023. I woke up early at 6 a.m. because I'm old. A few minutes later, I heard some booming noises, which is something you hear in the desert when the Air Force does its exercises. But I thought it was a bit weird as they don't normally do that on Saturdays. A few minutes later, I heard an alarm going off in the distance. I went outside to see what was happening and saw that some of my neighbors had started walking to the shelter. All houses built in Israel after the Gulf War, so from 1992 on, have to have a shelter built inside. This is what the shelter in our new house looks like, but we don't live there yet. It is a regular room, but there is this door and the window, and it is built using reinforced concrete. If you live in an older house, like we do now, you need to go to one of the communal shelters. Anyway, we went to our communal shelter with our neighbors. On the news, they were talking about an attack, and if I remember correctly, there was this photo of a pickup truck carrying terrorists, like the ISIS ones, in Insterot, which is a city next to the Gaza Strip. It was totally surreal. I thought it was fake. After a few hours, it had become clear that something really bad was happening. And the first thing that came into many Israelis' head was the Yom Kippur War that started on Saturday, October 6, 73. So exactly 50 years and a day before this attack. There have been a lot of TV series and movies about the Yom Kippur War over the last few months. The war was a terrible trauma. After the Six-Day War of 1967, the Israelis thought that they were undefeatable. In the Yom Kippur War, Israel was caught off guard. Israel was attacked by Egypt and Syria on the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Israel won after 19 days, but the price was high. 2,700 Israeli soldiers were killed. This was a highly traumatic event, which led to many changes in Israeli society. So in the first two days, the main association was with the scandal of the Yom Kippur War. And then as the picture of what happened in those first days became clearer, we started to understand that it was way bigger than a political or military scandal. Hundreds of civilians were murdered in their homes by Arab Muslims. Dozens of Jewish babies and toddlers beheaded. I could go on, but there is no need. You already know what they did to the women. This is Holocaust stuff. The 7th of October was the day on which more Jews were murdered than on any other day since the Holocaust, and they were mostly civilians in their own homes. Many Israelis had and are continuing to have anxiety attacks. This is going to have long-term effects. Like all Israelis, I was surprised, but in a deeper sense, I wasn't, or rather, like the scale of the Hamas attack, their organization, and the uh, timing, of course, surprised me. I never thought that they 
could manage to do something like this, but I'm not at all surprised by their brutality. Don't know what I'm talking about. Let's do a quick roundup. Lebanon, from the 70s to the 90s, brutal civil war left 150,000 dead. And this may surprise you, but Lebanon is an apartheid state. Palestinians who migrate to Lebanon in 1948, their children and grandchildren can't buy land and are not allowed to work in dozens of professions. The BBC won't be telling you about that. Syria, half a million dead in the last 12 years. Jordan, did you hear about Black September when the king ordered his tanks to drive over 3,000 Palestinians? And Egypt is deeply involved in the war in Yemen, which has so far cost the lives of 100 to 200,000 people. If they kill one another with so much enthusiasm, like in Iran, they murder women who don't cover their hair. Then what will they do to us if they get the chance? Last week, we had a test of it. I wasn't surprised. I'm a tour guide and my YouTube channel provides tips on how to get the most out of traveling to Israel. And every once in a while, I would upload a political video like, like this one. And my friends who are also tour guides would often say to me, why are you mixing these political videos into your travel tips? You are, you are shooting your business in, in the leg. And I even took the political videos down for, for a few months and then brought them back. People need to know what is going on. There is an unspoken rule in the Middle East. Muslims kill Muslims. That's no news. Nobody cares, if not even the Muslims. Muslims kill Jews. That's a tragedy, like an, like an earthquake. But if a Jew kills a Muslim, then all human rights organizations and student organizations wake up. I lived in Berlin for, for many years, and most of the Israelis there are very left-wing. They hated me for saying that all the values they, they believe in, democracy, human rights, gay rights, gender fluid pronouns, don't exist in Muslim society. Ask, ask a Muslim what will happen if his or her daughter says she's a lesbian. Try it. And Berlin may be so liberal and free and Berghain and KitKat, but Muslims living in Berlin handed out candy on the streets after the Jews were murdered last week. Israelis are now afraid to speak Hebrew in Kreuzberg and Neukölln, the Muslim parts of Berlin. Multikulti funktioniert einfach nicht. Back to Israel. How is life in Israel right now? Everyone knows somebody who died, so there are lots of funeral and shiva happening. Shiva is seven days of mourning in Judaism, seven days after the funeral, when the house is open and all the relatives, neighbors, and friends can come and pay their respects. It's a genius Jewish idea, and one day I will make a video about it. So many men have been enlisted into the army. In our community, there are about 250 of us, so adults, and around 30 are now in the army. Two of my brothers are in the army. I was dismissed from the army a, a few years ago because I'd been trained to use an old tank that was no longer in use. I made a video about my army service. You can check it out if you want to know more. I could volunteer in the army, and in fact, there are plenty of people older than me who are, who are doing army service. But I haven't done that for two reasons. My wife is German and doesn't have family here, and my parents are helping with my brother's children. And the second reason is that I hope that what I'm doing now, making these videos, is also, is also important. I have promised myself that as long as there is fighting, I will upload videos about the situation to show the world the war from the Israeli side. Every minute that I am not working on these videos, I tell myself, Oren, you, you idiot, there are, they are fighting, so work on your videos. To, to that, I will add, because the harsh truth must be said, that I'm not such a good soldier. I can shoot, but I don't often hit the target. Many Israelis are now volunteering in, in different fields. Every community, every city that is far enough away from the fighting hosts, families from their fighting zone. And because many of them fled without any equipment, Israeli individuals and companies are donating food, clothes, and toys. We are also doing our best to support families when the fathers have enrolled in the army. When it comes to day-to-day -day life, I will start by telling you something that might sound irrelevant and of minor importance, but that I think is significant. 
there are only sad, melodic, and hopeful songs being played. In Israel, we have this genre, genre of songs of Memorial Days that is also played on days of fighting. Two sad songs on the radio, one after another, and you know that something has happened before you even hear the news. A few soldiers have been posted in every village to guard the communities there. Children aren't going to school. Lots of activities are being put on for children in the communities, but kindergartens and schools are closed. As of this week, they are learning at home via Zoom, and we all know from Corona times how effective that was. No, but seriously, as important as it is for children to have routine and to go to school, uh, there are many logistic problems with that. And what would happen if there were rockets? All of the schools have shelters, but you know, still, Israelis now have three main issues on their minds. What will happen in the north with Hezbollah, which is 100 times stronger as Hamas? What will happen with Gaza? And then there is the hostage held by Hamas. To understand how emotional this topic is, I want to tell you something about Dov Bruder. He was an Israeli soldier who fell in the War of Independence, but whose body wasn't ever found. A few weeks ago, 75 years after he fell, his body was found. How was it found? There is a unit in the Israeli military that is dedicated to finding the bodies of soldiers whose fate was unknown. The discovery of his body made it into the first pages of all the newspapers in Israel. So if the Israelis are so obsessed with identifying a soldier who died 75 years ago and bringing him to be buried in, in Israel, you can imagine what Israelis are prepared to do in order to free Israelis' children who have been captured by Islamo-Nazis. Down below, I will leave links to aid organization for families whose world has fallen apart. Please consider donating. So these are the main things that are on our minds. If you have any questions, please write them below, and I will try to answer them in the next update. Hoping for better days. Yalla bye.